A rooftop deck or terrace is just a flat roof that you can walk on, using the same principles as a conditioned flat roof to manage bulk water, air leakage, and condensation from uncontrolled vapor diffusion. There's an argument to be made that a rooftop deck or terrace can actually extend the service life of the flat roof membrane below it, as it protects the membrane from heat, ultraviolet light from solar radiation, and water. However, installing a roof deck over a conditioned space is often constructed improperly, especially in the residential sector, resulting in condensation which can lead to mold and structural rot. In this video, we're discussing three different roof assemblies that work for a rooftop deck or roof terrace. Let's get into it. So, in this first detail here, we have a fairly typical flat roof assembly. However, we're installing our paver system or decking system on these adjustable pedestals designed to receive our pavers. Now, these pedestals are loose laid directly on top of the surface of the roof membrane with absolutely no fastener penetrations. And then we go to install the pavers in these integrated slots. They interlock together and they hold the entire decking system together so that it doesn't move around. And so these pedestals can either be installed over the roof membrane, or better yet, directly over rigid insulation layers, as in the case of an inverted roof or a protected membrane roof. And then that way we don't risk damaging the roof membrane. But this is how you would apply this system to a standard low-sloped roof assembly. The beauty of this system is that it reduces hydrostatic pressure on the roof membrane. So when water hits the surface of the roof, it hits the pavers first, and then trickles down here at the joints, and drains harmlessly down on the roof membrane. So there's no force to drive it through any joints or penetrations. So it's acting like a rain screen for a roof membrane, similar to what you would see on an exterior wall. The roof membrane is comparable to the weather-resistive barrier, the pedestals provide the ventilated air gap, and the pavers are acting similarly to the cladding. Now, of course you'll want to coordinate the loading conditions with your structural engineer to ensure that the loads of the pavers and the expected live loads on the roof are accounted for. Then we're calling out an 80 mil fully adhered TPO membrane. TPO is a pretty common roof membrane that you'll see all across the United States. You could use any other membrane of your choice, but we want to make sure that we're using something that's bonded to the substrate. So we're looking for either an adhered system, a fluid applied system, or a hot applied system. In this case, our TPO is adhered to the cover board, and the seams are heat welded so we have a completely monolithic water and air control layer. There's no way for water or air to move underneath that roof membrane if it's adhered. And so if we have a roof deck system like this, this is the least risky option. Then our roof membrane is adhered to a glass mat gypsum cover board with bonding adhesive. This this cover board transfers the thermal stresses of expansion and contraction of the roof membrane down to the roof deck. If it's direct bonded to insulation, it has a harder time transferring those thermal stresses down to the structure, and that can place stress elsewhere on the membrane or at parapet wall terminations. We also like to use this glass mat gypsum for these adhered TPO systems since they're designed to increase bonding strength. Then the cover board is fastened with compatible steel roofing screws. Make sure these are long enough to actually embed into the structure through that rigid insulation. And then we have tapered high density density polyiso insulation that's providing our slope to the roof, whichever direction that we're providing that slope. And this is probably the most common method of achieving a slope on a flat roof since we're framing the structure flat. Then underneath the tapered polyiso, we have a couple additional layers of polyiso with staggered and offset joints, but you can use any other rigid insulation of your choosing as long as it meets the minimum compression standards. If you're building in a cold climate, you'll need a thicker buildup of this rigid insulation. Then we have a fluid applied air and vapor barrier membrane. We want to make sure that we have a monolithic air and vapor barrier underneath the rigid insulation to prevent warm air from leaking or diffusing up into the roof assembly and getting trapped underneath the roof membrane. The TPO is an impermeable roofing material. We can't dry through it, so we need that air and vapor barrier here to prevent condensation on the underside of the roof membrane from moisture transported via air leakage. Air transports vapor at a rate that's orders of magnitude higher than diffusion, however we still need to prevent vapor from easily passing through and finding a path up there, so that's why we have this airtight vapor barrier here. We want something that's bonded to the decking, so we're looking for either a fluid applied system or a self-adhered membrane. We have our Advantech decking here, which is the 1 and 1 8 product, since we want a very strong and stable deck. And then we have engineered eye joists for the roof framing, and then a standard gypsum board for our interior finish. Now, another option that we have is to install our paver system directly over a sand or mud bed over a drainage mat with a bonded filter fabric. What this does is it allows any water that trickles down between the joints of the pavers or permeates through the pavers to freely drain on the surface of the roof membrane, as that drainage mat provides a small gap that eliminates hydrostatic pressure on the membrane. So water that trickles down just drains into this void space created by the drainage mat. Now, this drainage mat is very similar to this entangled mesh product that we have here. As you 
you can see, this entangled mesh can be used for a wide range of applications, and so any water passing through can drain freely to roof drains or any internal gutter system. Then underneath our drainage mat, we have our roof membrane, which should be either an adhered system or a fluid applied system to ensure that we have complete water and air control continuity across the entire roof deck. We want to avoid seams, laps, and penetrations as much as possible, since these are areas where water can leak through. And so we want that membrane to be completely continuous. And then below that, we have our standard flat roof assembly with a cover board, tapered rigid insulation, and the rigid insulation layers, a fluid applied or self-adhered air and vapor barrier to prevent air leakage from depositing moisture into the upper parts of the assembly to get trapped up there, and then our decking, framing, and our interior finish. So that's another way that we can accomplish roof deck or terrace over a conditioned space. We're still uncoupling the pavers or the finished surface of the roof deck from the roof membrane. That drainage layer is very important since we don't want to saturate the roof membrane and have water being driven inside. So this is a good option, however we can do better than this. This is the single best assembly that we have to construct a roof deck or terrace over a conditioned space. This utilizes the protected membrane roof assembly that we talked about in a previous video called the Perfect Flat Roof, which you can go watch over here. But the idea behind the assembly is that we're installing the insulation outboard of the roof membrane and uncoupling the two layers with a drainage mat. And what this does, in addition to the many durability benefits, is that it eliminates the potential for the tapered rigid insulation to deform over time underneath the weight of the paver system and the live loads above. If the insulation deforms in this assembly, it doesn't matter since the slope is integrated into the structure. So in this assembly, we have our paver system installed over those same adjustable pedestals that are loose laid over the extruded polystyrene insulation. So any water that happens to trickle down will make its way through the joints and simply drain out. It won't be held in tension against the roof membrane. The beauty of this system is that the roof membrane experiences almost no fluctuation in temperature since it's protected by the rigid insulation. It receives absolutely no ultraviolet light exposure from the sun, and we don't get any mechanical damage from maintenance. And so all of the damage functions that affect a typical flat roof are virtually eliminated. This is a 100 year roof assembly. Now, this is also the most expensive option that we have, however, it's truly the best system you could use for a roof deck or roof terrace or green roof system with the least amount of maintenance. Chances are, you'll have to replace the rigid insulation way before the roof membrane. This roof membrane will last decades longer than its expected service life. There's a reason why we call this the perfect roof. I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can better understand how that system works and how you can apply it to different roof assemblies. For more information on flat roof assemblies, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles on a wide range of topics. Also, make sure to pick up one of my climate-specific design guides to flat roofs. These break down the essentials of what you need to know before designing and building a flat roof, all laid out for you in this guide. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.